Hi friends, it's Lauren Taylor. Thanks for joining me in my craft room today. I'm grateful to have you here for a pretty pink posh video. I'm going to be making a spring card. I will be using the sentiment strip dies and Easter stamp set. I also have the leafy spring wreath stamp set with its coordinating dies and the daisy stamp set with its dies. I'm also going to make a panel using my stitch torn rectangle dies and the Easter words stencil. I originally thought I was going to die cut the word spring, but I thought it would take away from my wreath. So disregard <laughs> that I have that die out. I'm starting with an A2 panel of kind of a peachy apricot colored piece of cardstock and then I'm going to use saltwater taffy distress oxide to create a tone on tone kind of subtle look using the Easter words stencil. I'm going up at a diagonal so it's a little heavier on the ink in the bottom right corner and then it fades out to the top left. Let's do a stencil reveal. I just love stencil reveals and I really like this tone on tone look. It's very subtle. Next, I'm going to use the largest of the stitch torn rectangle dies and I'll go ahead and die cut that out off camera. Then I'm going to grab in some watercolors. I have a pearl color pigment watercolor palette and I'm going to use kind of the limey green color. I will tie in these peach, pink, and green colors into my card when I get to the coloring portion. So I just sprayed right into my watercolor palette and I'm using a small brush to pick up the paint and just tapping the brush getting that watercolor splatter all over the panel and I will set it aside to dry. So while it's drying, I'll grab my Misty and I'm going to use an alcohol marker friendly white cardstock as well as a black ink so I can color in my images using alcohol markers. I'm using the wreath and three of the smaller flowers from the Leafy Spring Wreath Stamp Set. I'm also going to use the bow and two of the smaller daisies from the daisies stamp set. I love that we can combine older and new sets together to make really fun cards. I'm going to place my Olo marker caps on the screen here, but I'm using YG 2.5 as the darkest shade for my leaves. I'm going to do most of my coloring with only two maybe three sometimes shades to keep my coloring pretty simple. So after I add the darker color, I'm bringing YG 2.1 to blend that out and I'll use that to fill in the rest of the leaves on this panel. I'm gonna bring in OR 2.2 as the darker color for these smaller flowers and use OR 2.0 to fill in the rest of the petals. I really like that color, so let's go a little bit darker in that same kind of peachy pink color. So for the rest of the small flowers, I'm using R0.3 as the darker shade, and I'm applying the darker colors at the center of the petals, and then I'm using R0.2 to fill in the rest of the petals. I like having kind of the darker color in the center since that is where more of the depth would be in the flower when it gets towards the center with all of the, well, pollen <laughs> in the middle. After those are done, let's bring in some yellow for the centers. I'm using Y2.3 as the center color for all my flowers. I use this for the daisies as well. And Y2.2 as the lighter color, just really quickly blending those out. And then for the daisies, I was going to do Y2.0 as the darker color and then use my colorless blender to blend it out. But I thought it looked really nice on its own. So I'm just using that Y2.0 in the center of all my petals and I just let that dry. I don't end up using a second color for the daisies as I want them to look like they are white. Now for the bow, this is where I'm going to bring in three colors. I'm using R0.4 as the darkest color and I'm adding that to the center of my bow and then along the edges. I want the center of each of the 
like circle the bow part. I'm trying, I don't, you can't see my hands, but I'm trying to mimic the bow part. Uh, that's where I want the light to be hitting my bow. So I left that lighter and then I'm bringing R0.3 to fill in the rest of the ribbon on the bow. And I'm not going to go all the way to the end of my little ends of my bow. I will bring in R0.2 and I will color the inside of the bow. I just want it to look like a really full big bow and then also to finish blending out the ends. Now that my coloring is all done, I'll go ahead and use their coordinating dies to cut all of the images out and we can start assembling our panel. I'm going to have my wreath be obviously the big center point of my card and I went through and played with the arrangement of my flowers until I was happy with how it looked. I wanted my flowers to be more towards the bottom and that bow to be at the bottom center. Once I was happy with the layout, I'll start gluing everything together. I'm going to use liquid glue to keep my flowers and my wreath all on the same level. I will pop up the wreath once I'm all done adding my flowers with foam adhesive just to give my card a little bit more dimension. But you can definitely skip adding foam and just glue it right to your panel if you'd like a flat card. So I'll go through, I'm just picking up the flowers kind of one at a time so I don't lose my layout. You could definitely use a sticky mat to pick everything up or you could use some mint tape or repositionable tape to help keep everything in place. But I was okay if it didn't turn out exactly the same. I liked how it, how it had a random look but yet still felt very symmetrical, if that makes sense. <laughs> so I'm just gonna finish adding in my flowers here. Again, I have an idea of how I want everything layered, so I'm gluing whatever flower is gonna be further back first, and then I can add the smaller flowers as details that will be more on top of the larger flower. So you can see here, I'm adding that small pink, and then finally this last little flower on the wreath towards the upper left. And finally, I'll add that bow in the center. I'm gonna use it as my guide when I attach my wreath to my card to make sure that it is centered. You can see I'm using my grid mat to make sure I have the bow right where I want it so my wreath feels a little bit balanced. So now that my wreath is all assembled, let's grab some foam adhesive. I'm using a standard two millimeter size. This is just kind of your average thickness of foam adhesive. And I have squares, so I'm just placing them around the back of my wreath. I'll peel off all of the release paper off the back of these little squares, and then I'll use the grid again with my mat here. It does like this, this panel is, like sliding everywhere. So I'm using my magnets to keep it in place while I use the grid to try to get my wreath as centered as possible. I'm going a little bit higher on the panel so that way I can add my sentiment at the bottom. I was originally thinking of adding spring to the top of my wreath, but I end up not liking that. So we're just going to go with the sentiment strip. I already had a sentiment strip die cut from a previous project in this yellow cardstock that I thought matched the center of my flowers perfectly, so I was very happy about that. I went ahead and die cut a simple strip out of white cardstock and I'm stamping in a pink ink, sending a springtime hello. Since I didn't use the spring die cut, I wanted to make sure I had spring still in my sentiment and I stamped it twice with my Misty to make sure I had a clear impression with my pink ink. I'm going to glue all these layers together. So I'm starting with adding the white sentiment strip and I'm attaching that with liquid adhesive to the center of my yellow scalloped sentiment strip. I'll flip it over and this time I'm using a little bit thinner of a foam adhesive. I'm using one millimeter, but definitely use what you have. Or like I said before, you could just attach this directly to the stitched uh, torn rectangle panel. Again, using my grid mat to help me get it as centered and straight as I can. And then we will attach this to our card base. I'm using a top folding A2 card base that I cut out of some sturdy white card stock. And I'm just using a tape runner to add adhesive to the back of my panel and doing my best to get it nice and centered onto that A2 card base. 
For some final touches, I'm bringing in the four millimeter clear droplets. I felt like they looked like little water droplets, very springy. So I'm going to add them to my card. I end up only attaching them onto my wreath. It took me a while to figure out how I wanted these little droplets to look. So I'm going to fast forward. Otherwise we would have been here for 10 more minutes. And I used a jewel picker to pick up each of the droplets once I had it placed where I wanted it and added them down with liquid adhesive. Here is a final look at my springtime hello leafy wreath with small pink flowers and daisies card. I hope you had fun with me today combining these two sets together. I absolutely love how this card turned out. I can't wait to use it for spring. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll click like and if you're new here, I hope you'll subscribe and come back. As always, you can find everything I use down below in the description box. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Bye!